Hey there, fellow investors. Have you heard the news? The legendary Michael Berry is back in action with just one word on Twitter. That's right, the same guy who made a fortune by betting against the US housing market before it crashed is making waves again. He's got a knack for being right when everyone else is wrong. So buckle up to hear what this one word tweet could mean for the world of investing. Let's get right into it. Yo, Barry the financial genius from the big short tweeted just one word in Jan that caused the stock markets to go crazy. He basically revealed where he thinks stocks are headed. Barry's like totally calling for a crash. Yeah, you got it, a crash. He just tweeted, sell. But ever since his tweet about selling in January, things have been going the other way. Dude, the S&P 500 has gone up by almost 15% since October. Did Barry mess up this time? Did he finally lose after all those wins? Nah, there are tons of signs that the stock market slump from last year still has ways to go. We might be in the middle of a long slump, but there are quick upswings in between. This kind of thing happens a lot when the market is correcting itself. Why even bother with Michael Berry now that his tweet in January telling people to sell didn't work out? So, Barry and his hedge fund totally cashed in during the 2008 financial crisis by betting on the housing market, tanking, and they were spot on. So, in the mid-2000s, Barry was checking out the financial statements of banks and he was like, whoa, these guys are making some seriously bad loans, especially with mortgages. Back then, mortgage lending was totally blowing up and it was super reckless. Lenders came up with these crazy loans called ninja loans where they'd give money to people with no income, no job, and no assets. Can you believe it? There were even loans called negative amortization loans where people didn't have to pay back the principal and could even skip paying the interest part of their loan. Crazy, right? So basically, they just kept adding interest to what you owed, making your mortgage bigger and bigger as time went on. But it was the Adjustable Rate Mortgage, or ARM, that really got Barry interested as a new kind of mortgage. Dude, for like the first five years, the interest rate on those debts was super low, way lower than what everyone else was getting. After the first time of low interest, the interest rate skyrocketed to make up for the five years of lost money. So basically, the lenders would charge higher interest rates than what everyone else was charging for the remainder of the loan. Barry knew that a lot of folks who got arms could not be able to handle the payments when their interest rates shot up after five years. Lots of families wouldn't be able to pay their bills anymore, and some might have to sell their houses. Dude, the housing market was gonna tank. So Barry was like, yo, check it. These first three arms were given out way back in 2002. I'm telling you, when the interest rate on the first one goes up in 2007, the housing market is gonna go to shambles. And he was like, oh dang, this crash could be a way to make some cash. Now, those mortgage lenders took some bad mortgages and mixed them up with good ones and sold them to investors as mortgage-backed securities. So, Barry basically used credit default swaps, which are a type of derivative, to bet against those assets. He sold short on the housing market. Yeah, he was right. Dude, when the housing market crashed, Barry made a cool $100 million from credit default swaps, and his hedge fund raked in $700 million for its owners. So. Is he doing it again? Does Barry see something that nobody else is seeing? So at the end of March, Barry posted a chart on Twitter with the caption, going back to the 1920s, there has been no BTFD generation like you. Congratulations. Barry's tweet is like totally sarcastic. He's saying that people are getting way too excited about the stock markets these days. So what's this tweet trying to say? BTFD means buy the freaking dip, and it's a way some investors think. So like when the stock market is down, it's a good time to buy because you can get stocks for cheaper. Basically, Barry's tweet has this chart that shows how the S&P 500 usually bounces back after a bad day in the market. If the S&P had a bad day from the 1940s to the 80s, its returns were in the red. So basically, when the market had a bad day, investors got all negative and sold their holdings. But in the last few decades, people have been all about buying the dip and stuff. And when the market goes down, investors usually buy the cheaper stocks and the market goes back up. But you know what's cool? In the last few years, updates have been even stronger after a down day than they used to be. So basically, Barry is saying that you're not part of the BTFD crowd. Dude, stocks are like super in demand after a down day. It's crazy. 
But Barry isn't saying the market is doing well. He's saying it's like super crazy and irrational right now. Is he correct this time? Nobody knows for sure. But there's a lot of evidence to suggest that the stock market correction that started last year and then turned around in recent months still has a bit more to go. Let's start by checking out this important thing called the CAPE ratio to get a better idea. No worries, we won't let all that fancy talk scare you away. So basically the CAPE ratio or Schiller PE ratio checks if stock prices are in line with their usual patterns. And wow, can you believe it? The CAPE ratio for S&P 500 stocks is 75% higher than usual. If we want to go back to those old ways, stocks got to drop by more than 40%. Boy, that's a big correction that could really change things up in the market. Stocks can't keep up those high prices for too long, you know. But hold up, let's not assume things too quickly. So apparently there are some folks out there who think that there's a ton of money just waiting to be thrown into the stock market as soon as prices drop. But honestly, it's not that easy. So the first issue is that the amount of money in the economy is actually getting smaller. Yeah, you got it. Shrinking. The Fed moves like quantitative easing and now quantitative tightening have been a big part of this whole thing. They've been trying to control inflation, but it's actually made the money supply shrink. It's like our cash is on a crazy roller coaster. But wait, there's more. Dude, even if there were tons of cash just waiting to be thrown into the stock market, it's not as easy as it looks. Money in savings accounts doesn't just chill there waiting to be invested. Banks lend it out to folks who need to borrow cash for different reasons. Nah, it ain't gonna make it to the stock market. That's it guys, we hope you had a blast hearing about the possible stock market crash. Hey, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel for more awesome financial insights, and make sure to hit the notification bell so you don't miss a thing. Hey, drop your thoughts in the comments down below as usual. Do you think there's gonna be a crash, or do you see something else happening? We love hearing from you. See you later. Make sure to keep your investments diversified and stay on top of your money game. Catch you later.